tudo mundo. I just had to document this. This is so crazy. I got this shirt in the mail. It says living life right side up. It says living life right side up. What's so weird is, uh -oh. what's so weird is I just walked in the post office and I was texting my son right this moment. And it said, a very wise man once said, falling down is part of life, getting back up is living. And I walked over and I had this in my post office box, literally while I was texting what I just said. What? Okay, so now I gotta do. Okay, so this is absolutely insane. So I came over to Sam Ash Music to look at a guitar that uh, an image my kid had sent me. And out of all the guitars on the wall, and I mean, they go all the way over there to the walls. Out of all the guitars on the wall, we were walking along this wall and we are talking about the difference in prices of guitar and the reason they were different prices. And as we were walking down this way, I said, yeah, it's, I, I told Corey, one reason there's a big difference is because the action, I grabbed this guitar myself and I started moving the string there just to show him the difference of the action on the guitar. Well, that's the exact guitar I came to look at and I had no clue. Okay, this is the, what's it called? A bunting? Uh, this is a little bunting I found on the side of the road coming home from my miraculous days past couple days. It's kind of odd. We're letting a bird go. Hopefully a hawk doesn't swoop down and grab him <laughs> mm -hmm. right when he leaves. Anyway, it looks like he's ready to roll. Hopefully, we'll see. Okay, as crazy as it sounds, I just let the bird go. It flew over here and it looked like landed right here and I reached down to pick it up and check on it and it was just gone I mean gone I even cut back any and all grass around here and ran my hands over the entire ground to see if somehow I missed it so the bird literally disappeared we didn't see it it flew over here but it, I had I saw it and I was gonna put my hand on it and then it was just gone I mean it was literally gone and I went out and I mean I sat here and I tried to figure out What's the possibility? Where could it have gone? I haven't cut back any grass that was in there just to search it out, just to make sure. Uh, he's gone, that, that bird is gone. Dis not just gone, disappeared. And then I was like, okay, well, he's she's gone for good. And I was, it was a female, forget the name of the bird, uh, bunting, a female bunting. And then I went, to pick up my phone and it said 426 and I heard the Lord say look at 426 it means Allah which is God singular and judgment that's just nuts really thank you so much Adam. yeah And I said, no, no, to this.
Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay, now you take it. Mm -hmm. Bottled, so I, I'm like, just doing quick snap house that somehow they ended up with that somehow they ended up with that the Lord gave them. somehow they ended up with that the Lord gave them they ended up with that the Lord gave them okay awesome okay cool yes okay cool yes okay doggies in Okay, guys, so here I am. I'm at the containers in Grand Junction at Rainbow Drive right there. 154 Rainbow Drive. Uh, I've probably already shown you the picture of the big rainbow behind me showing up and giving you the testimony because that's insane. Everybody yeah. there? Everybody there? Hang on, hang on, guys. So anyway, so I, I'm doing a video. Hang on, guys. So anyway, I'm documenting everything. I got Cat and Corey on the other line right here. See, Cat and Corey. And I'm standing here at 154 Rainbow Drive. Let me, let me see if that'll, there you go. Rainbow Drive right there above me. And I'm gonna document this so you guys get to see this. This is so crazy. So Cat and Corey, I'm on the phone with you guys and I'm, show, I'm doing a video right now and I'm showing that I'm on the phone with you and Corey. So <clears throat> what was the very first thing I saw guys when I, when I, when I started my drive and I was telling the Lord, I know that this is the end. I, uh, this is what you called me to do as my final thing. What was the first thing I stopped on the journey that the Lord showed me? Kat and Corey, what'd you it, it is finished and a sculpture of Jesus coming on the clouds with the shofar. Blowing yep. the shofar, right? Yep. Okay, and then, then on the way here, right after that, I ended up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And... I ended up in Albuquerque, New Mexico to meet some people. The Lord sent me there, which was really weird. And it turns out I was meeting a guy named Stephen. And he has a nun son named Stephen that lives in Grand Junction out of all the odds in the world. And I was like, that's so strange. But when I walked into the house where I went to meet these people, right when I walked in, what was on the coffee table? Shofar. A shofar. There was a shofar on the table. And it said, the one that chosen to proclaim, right? Yes. So I'm documenting that because I'm getting ready to open the containers for you guys right now. So I'm getting ready to open the containers. It's really weird the reflection this phone's making right now. Hang on. Okay, so now I'm starting the next video. Okay, so so I'm going to open the, the one that's the judgment seat first. And I'm going to open this up. And... um. Let you guys look in, and I'm going to kind of back in and walk and see it here. And the Lord told me, make sure you look at what's in the Bible. I haven't looked yet, but you're looking at what's what's on the table right there. And I'm documenting it right now with these guys on the phone. There it is right there. And so I want you all to look at what's right there in the middle of the chessboard, the white king standing the black king and queen are, are down opposite directions. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch the video view. So I'm walking in here and I'm just gonna show you guys, this is without all the colored lights on. I've got Cat and Corey on the phone. 
I'm walking in. This is the, the one that represents the judgment seat. The tomb is empty. That's the empty tomb the Lord told me to put there. There's a, the crucifixion at Calvary, the two becoming one. And now I'm going to sit down here at the judgment seat. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to show you what the Bible is opened up to. The book of Revelations. And this is what's going on. There's a little super, a miracle right there. The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. And when this was put here, there was a little pamphlet that said almost time. But now you can see on the chessboard, the white king is standing. The black king and queen, let me show you some. These things were magnetic. And this happened at the, the get together itself. I was putting one down and it just got close and it just went just like that. So I'm gonna show that to you one more time. So here's what happened. When I set this down at the get together in Grand Junction, the Lord told me put the black king down on the board and this was sitting over there. And when I set it down, it rolled. It just kind of rolled towards the queen and they went like that and it was over. And, then I, and I was just like, that's insane. So now I'm documenting where the Bible's open to. So now the book of Revelation begins. Okay, so I wanna show everybody, this is the system. These are two different things coming into the system. That's one energy, that's the other energy. And it's coming in the form of semen, which carries the spark of life. And then look at this vortex, look how 3D this vortex is. And so it goes in over here, and then the vortex comes out over here. So it goes to the other side and it's birthed into a twin system, which is the devil. That's a baby, that's the devil, it's a twin. And there's one upside down. So it's birthed into that system, which is what we got birthed into. And we went from one dimension to the other dimension into a twin system. And then the Lord God reconciles us back to himself and the tomb is empty because of what he did at Calvary. Kind of ironic. You know, I'm here to pick up the container. I'm here to pick up the container. I'm unloading the back of my truck to get the stuff out to, you know, prepare the containers for shipment to the Ark. Isn't that interesting? From Rainbow Avenue to the Ark, you know, think of the Ark and the Rainbow. Anyway, but Steve, the guy I met on the drive here, the guy I met in Albuquerque, um, his, by the way, Stephen means crowned. And uh, I, I met him in Albuquerque with his wife. Uh, I, I thought I was there to lay hands on everybody. Um, but it turns out he has a son in Grand Junction, which is where I'm at. So imagine stopping in Albuquerque, going to Grand Junction. And I'm on my way to Grand Junction. And I said, well, I'm not sure why the Lord sent me here. But, you know, I'm sure I'll find out. And then he mentions he has a son named Stephen in Grand Junction, which is where I was going from Albuquerque. The odds of that are impossible. Well, let me show you what Steve gave me. Home defense insect killer kills all bugs. It's kind of weird since I'm the guy that was able to show the world that Revelation 9-11 says they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. Who had a king over them? The locust from the pit with tails like scorpions. They had a king over them. So just to make sure that I was clear about that, when I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, talking to Stephen about the Lord sent me, and Stephen means crown. His son's name is Stephen as well. So I'm going to get together with Stephen here in Grand Junction, which means crowned also. But what I find really strange is that there's, um, that he gave me this to bring to his son, crowned and crowned. And it means, you know, the twin system crowned. And here it is. Um, very bizarre to give uh, his son, Stephen, insect killer.
Okay, it's Sunday and I'm getting these ready to transport. This is from the event in Grand Junction, the two containers, the one that represents the bride, uh, the bride of Christ, and then this one, the judgment seat of Christ. If you don't know about it, I'm sorry, I just can't go through it all. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's all out there on YouTube. Uh, this was the Grand Junction event. And for those of y'all that know what these represent, it represents a new Jerusalem and the groom, the bride and the groom, the, brood, the bride and the judgment seat. Um, I don't even know what to say. If you guys have watched all the miracles that have happened, it's almost just speechless. So now if you're watching this, you know that on the drive to come up here to get these containers that represent Jesus coming and the bride leaving. On the way to come up here, I know that this is one of my last things I'll ever do. And the one place that the Lord had me pulled over, you've already seen it, was Jesus blowing a shofar that I looked off the highway going 80 miles an hour and I looked over and I saw a statue of Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven blowing a shofar and it says, it is finished. When I arrived in Albuquerque and I met um, Stephen and, and Ellen Sample over at a friend's house, when I walked in the door, these are people I've never met. It was like when the Lord just sends me to meet to someone to lay hands on them. I even told him, I said, I'm not sure why he's sending me here. And I walked in the door and there was a shofar and a plaque under the shofar that said, chosen to proclaim the coming of Christ. And I was like, okay, that's insane. When I opened up this door to this container, the Bible is open to the book of Revelation and there's a shofar on it. And when I left this, the last time I saw these containers, when I left here after the Grand Junction event, I was told to leave it like that. And I could honestly tell you, I wouldn't remember what was in there exactly and how it was arranged, but that's how it rolled out. That's the way it all rolled out. And on the Bible in there that's open to the book of Revelation, there's a shofar, there's a chess set. The black king and queen are, are laying down on their side and they're magnetized and they grabbed each other facing opposite directions. I didn't do that. It happened. The king just rolled like he was rolling off the board and it grabbed the queen and stuck them together right side up and upside down. I was told to leave the white ki the, the, the white king standing. So in there in that container that represents the judgment seat on a chessboard is a white king standing and a black king and queen, queen laying down, stuck together opposite directions. <laughs> what the? <laughs> you can't even think this up. There's an hourglass and the time's out. Shofar on the way up. Shofar at my first meeting, shofar in the container. And if, I mean, if you guys have been watching what's going on, the rainbow showing up with me, I'm at Rainbow Drive, right there, Rainbow Drive. That's crazy, that's insane. So now I'm gonna get these ready for transport and they're going to their final resting place at the Ark, at the Ark at the ark <laughs> they're going to the ark so the bride and the groom are going to the ark which is an acronym and by the way i didn't name it i didn't name it the ark i didn't decide any of this <laughs> they're going to the ark and the ark is angel refugee center angel refugee center just saying <laughs> what are the odds and here we are at let's see rainbow let's see if you can see it uh, I'll, I'll flip the camera around and show it. Rainbow and Casimir. You can't think this stuff up. So here we are at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir, Covenant of Peace. Where the event was, I'm gonna not back down those steps. I'm gonna go down them forward. <laughs> and there's the two containers at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. 
here looking at it. That's where the jump, that's where we had the event in the sky. And here they are representing the bride of Christ right there and the judgment seat. And I'm getting them ready for transport now. Amen. So here is the first one. This is the first container that the Lord had me do. And he told me to put a tidal wave covering the Statue of Liberty. So there's a Statue of Liberty being covered by a tidal wave. See the reflection in the water. And then there's the tidal wave coming over. And then he told me to put Jeremiah 51, 42 on the wall. The waves have come up over Babylon and she is utterly consumed by fire. So this whole wall is fire, so it gets red lights and red and orange lights and this gets blue lights and we'll put a slideshow in here. You'll get to see the cut. these things lit up in the slideshow after this part. So there's the tidal wave covering Statue of Liberty. Those who took licentious freedom, uh, I never got converted. Okay, and then here's the Tree of Life. Look at, look at this amazing thing that's happening right now with the light. That's, that's the light coming through that big tree up there. See right there, the light's shining through it and it's hitting this tree. And this tree is picking up the light movement from the sun outside. See it? That's the actual sun. So this represents the Tree of Life right here and so in the vi in the slideshow you'll see this has been lit up before and it just literally looks like energy coursing through the whole tree and you'll see that in the slideshow but like i said i'm getting them ready right now for transport to pick them up pretty fascinating so anyway and so on to the last wall this represents the heartbeat of life and it's going it's going through a dimension through a vortex and it's like an eye, it's like the center of an eye, and it's going through that vortex. What's crazy is, if you're looking at the light I'm looking at, it's like, what are the odds? That's just the craziest thing in the world, what you're looking at. And there's the heartbeat of life leaving. And then the table, this is what the Lord told me to do, was put the table here, and he, gave, he showed me how to put this, this grind on the table. And it literally makes a, a mag, like a magnetic field around the whole thing. It's, it's phenomenal when it's lit up. And then the glasses and there's right side up, upside down crosses. In each place you would sit. And on the glass there's the shin symbol. And there's this V with fangs because... And anybody that wants to argue that, that's the system we got saved from because of the shin symbol. And what the shin symbol represents. So here we go. And here's this. And now this is the Lord's Prayer that lights up from the inside. And oddly enough, I was told to do this by the Lord, put the Lord's Prayer on it, which I did. And then it lights up as a rainbow. It's absolutely unbelievable. So again, so I got a quick phone call then. But right there is the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew and it lights up and it turns into a rainbow and it just happens to be on Rainbow Avenue. And the Lord's Prayer, the words themselves turn to a rainbow. That's just not even possible. That's what I prayed the night I got saved. And here's this one mirror. There used to be two mirrors. There used to be one there. But we took it out for the get-together. And the Lord just told me, no, don't take it with you. Leave it open. Don't. Because it's time to leave through the back door. I'm like, okay. I will leave the other mirror out. There it is. So I will not be putting an identical mirror right there. Then right up there, it says, the wages of sin is death. And then if you simply turn that over and turn the whole thing over, it says the free gift of God is eternal life. That's just that word turned upside down. It spells life right there. And what's so crazy is you see the exit sign behind it? The electrician that put the exit sign in there, he messed up. 
He's like, oh man, I'm sorry, I put it upside down. And I said, you know what, just go ahead and leave it. It's perfect. <laughs> the exit is upside down. I mean, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds of all of this? Anyway, so there you go. That's what it means. That's the symbology, the tree of life, the heartbeat of life leaving through the center like of the eye of the storm. And that's the QRSD complex. Fire and Babylon is utterly consumed by fire. I'm just going to document this because I, I mean, I don't know what I was thinking by not doing this, but it's Isaiah 41, verse 3, all the way through Isaiah 42. No, two, I'm sorry, to Isaiah 42, and this ends on Isaiah 42, 9. And so this is the page that was open in here, so... I guarantee it's significant, even though it's significant, even though I'm not even sure what it is, but I guarantee it'll play into what's going on. Anyway, so I wanted to document that. It's kind of odd. There's a ring in here as well. Um, there's like a, a wedding ring here, and it's Ezekiel. Looks like 30, 37. Ezekiel 37 right here. That's all Ezekiel 37. And then to Ezekiel 38. Let's see. Anyway, so documenting that. I'm, so I'm going to fold this up and get it ready for transport. I'm going to leave it just like it was. And fold this up and get it all ready just to pack up. And it's going to get shipped out. So here we go. It's interesting, these quail have been walking all around the house and they came out from under the hoopah in the front yard. It's a very unique quail. It's got a little bobby thing on his forehead. That's <laughs> this one's circling the whole house. <laughs> yeah. There's more. <laughs> okay, I'm starting this video pointing at my feet, so I remember which one it is. Okay, so this is how this is set up. The mirror sets on the ground flush, then there's a L bracket right here that's attached to the mirror, which holds the mirror to the, to the back wall. Then this board, this board comes across, this is one thing, this, this rectangular thing with the life and death thing on it. It comes across and this pole goes all the way down to the ground as the support for this end to make the back door accessible. But this whole thing, there's a double board right here just for construction purposes, and there's the wages of the free gift of God is eternal life, just happens to be over an upside down exit sign. Okay, so this is your video to remember how to set this up. Mirror on the left side, L bracket over there. The L bracket over here didn't, didn't reach. I could always put a block in there and secure it better to the side. This, this just hung for lights. This is just for lighting. And then the big pole supports it into the floor. All right. Okay guys, so I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm so tired. Anyway, uh, up on the wall it says Ephesians 2.14 right there above my finger. You know the the Jonathan Clack clap, victory is our cry. I think that's probably his purpose was to make one new man from the two. Honestly, when he had me put all these things in here, I don't I don't remember him exactly having you know already done it, but check this out. Look at the set of twins coming out of this vortex. Look at that tunnel behind me. Do you guys see that tunnel? Just right right there. 
right in there coming out. So the set of twins, yeah, so the twin system, so this shows the two different energies coming through this vortex into the twin system. Now let me show you this. So you have one coming from above, you see right here, in this disc, obviously it's a sperm coming into the system. One coming from below, and they're coming into the system, then look, they're going into that vortex, and then they're going to the other side, get it? So they go in one, and they come out the other on the other side, and it's the twin system. One right side up, one upside down, one's a devil, one's not, Cain and Abel, and that represents the, the dualistic system. I mean, this is just mind-blowing. I'm sorry, but standing here being the one that the Lord had do this, I almost can't believe I did it. It's like, what? So then there's the twin system on this wall showing the twin system. And then here's the reconciliation. And then the tomb is empty. So that's a tomb. That's a coffin that's down in the ground. And if you sit here and look at it, it just sinks way down into the ground. And the tomb is empty. And that's why on that table, there's the two little books that said the tomb, the tomb is empty. Those were miracles I found along the way. And now, this is the reconciliation of the two and one. Ephesians 2.14, his purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. So now I'm moving these to the ark. Now imagine going from a Rainbow Avenue, Rainbow. Did you see the rainbow that showed up with me to arrive here? And did you hear the testimony of what happened when I pulled over to tell this cop, this guy's so DWI, is going off the road. And when I turn around to walk back to my car, there's this giant rainbow and I'm in the center of the rainbow. Are you kidding me? And we're leaving, we're leaving Rainbow Drive. There's Rainbow Drive right where my finger is right there. <laughs> so awesome. Okay, the king's coming. And by the way, the noises you're hearing, I don't know if you guys hear this. There's this noise that keeps going. And I'm like, what is that? There's these doves and they just keep flying and posting up right there on that limb, right? Right there on that limb. These doves just keep posting up and then going. And I'm just like, this is so random. It's so amazing. Look at that, going into the vortex, they're going into the system, you chose to go into it. Okay, then you come out. Oh my God, you're born into a twin system, Cain and Abel. But don't worry, the grave is empty because what I did on Calvary to save you from your dualistic twin nature. <laughs> the resolution of the twins. So this is the resolution of the twins. There's the, there's the Cain and the Abel inside of you, the cannibal inside of you. The one that fixes it is El, the Almighty God. When you came into the system inside of you, you have your own cannibal system going on, Cain and Abel in your head. There's a good you and a bad you. There's a, your double spirited superhuman angel demon from Ephesians 2. And his purpose was to reconcile both to God through the cross making one new man from the two because you got caught in a vortex of a twin system inside of this body and the greatest mystery of everything is solved. <laughs> Don't go in! No. All glory to God. So here it is, check it out. The gift of God is eternal life. L-I-F-E. The gift of God is eternal life. If you turn that sign upside down, the wages of sin, the wages of sin is death. Right side up, upside down. Sin is the dualistic system. Shema, O Israel, for the Lord your God is one. See, the Lord God is one. He's not two, but the system is dualistic. So you have to be reconciled from the twin system out of it. Do you understand? That's the mystery of everything, guys. The right side up you, upside down you. There's a double U. His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus the orientation of the cross is at Calvary. The good you on one side, the bad you on the other, and him in the middle. 
Imanu El. With us is El, the Almighty God. <laughs> Can you believe what you're looking at here? This is a representation that the Lord God took a, a host body named Jonathan Kleck and said, I'm going to show everybody what's going on and I'm going to make it understandable to them using the Bible, scripture, and a supernatural gift in artwork to make it all visible. So you go to the other side through this vortex. That shows the formation of the flesh. When you do that, you leave and you come into another system that's twin, Cain and Abel. It's cannibalistic. It's a twin. Light and dark, good and evil, angel, demon. And so now when you read the Bible and you understand that, it is pure perfection. It's so crazy. That's what he's had me doing for a while. He taught me how to read the Bible uh, using the sword, and that's how I was able to resolve all this. This is all glory to God. I didn't do it. He did it. He allowed me to participate. Anyway, how cool, huh? Okay, so the doors are secure. I secured both sides have these, I mean, fascinating, these, these glass doors. If you look down... Everything's a reflection. The floor is red, representing his blood. That's what he told me to do. These are all instructions that he gave me when I did them, and now I know why, because later I would find out it's perfect. <laughs> anyway, it's hard to, I'm trying to, okay, I'll look at the camera. Anyway, so there it is. Doors are secured. The containers are leaving Grand Junction, the great coming together. They're leaving the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. Did you see the rainbow when I showed up? Look what he did for us. And so this one's been secured too. This represents what's gonna happen. New York will be utterly consumed by fire and the water's tidal wave. They're gonna nuke New York. It's on the $10 bill. It's also on the $100 bill. The Lord, let me show it to y'all in 2014. Uh, actually, 2007, then 2014 later, that prophetic utterance came to fruition, showing the imagery on the U.S. currency. The $100 bill shows this event. It shows this nuclear event. These are flames. It's, uh, those are all flames. Uh, well, the waves have come up over Babylon. Babylon is the system. The female mother goddess system. The waves have come up over Babylon. And so there's a tidal wave behind me and it's just covering the Statue of Liberty, which represents the host body system that the angels were took the liberty to, to do and to create. And so now the waves have come up over Babylon and she is utterly consumed by fire. That's why this wall is all fire. Now I understand it all. On the opposing wall is the tree of life. And it shows like just the heartbeat going through the limbs. And over here, this is, it's, uh, it's like a, a vortex as well, but it's actually 3D coming out. Depends on where you stand. It's like an eye, but in the dead center is the heartbeat of life. But what's really strange is I noticed yesterday, it's got, see the white? It looks like a white going up and then a white going that way. Like the center of an eye of a hurricane. That's where... You know, it's totally still in the middle of a hurricane. Anyway, that's, so that's like the eye of the Lord God that gives us that heartbeat, that spark of life into the system. There was a mirror here. So this is what the Lord had me do when I did these. There was this mirror here and there was one there that was covering up that door. He told me to take it out. I tuck it out. I left it here on Rainbow Drive. He told me to leave it open because metaphorically we're leaving through the back door and see the exit sign up there. Can you see the electrician that installed it when he installed the piece? Uh, he, he's like, oh no, I'm so sorry, dude. I installed it upside down. And I said, you know, isn't that perfect? <laughs> Just leave it. And so the exit that got sold is that, and it was bought and paid for with the blood of Christ that we could know that this world's upside down and backwards. And that was the mystery of everything. And it was inside of you. And you're your own worst enemy. And Jesus came to fix that. Amen. So I just wanted to document, I just, I just had 
lunch at this place called the Zen Garden and I'm showing you guys my fortune. It says, don't worry about the world coming to an end. It's already tomorrow in Australia. And this is just the place I was at. I came just to, just to document it. This is where I'm at. It's called Zen Garden. And this is my, this is my, I'm documenting this. I just walked out and opened my fortune cookie. I was like, okay, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Don't worry about the world coming to an end. It's already tomorrow in Australia, in Australia. No, I'm gonna. Sh okay, it's Johnny. I'm here with Margie and Ellie, and I'm in Grand Junction getting the containers. And so this hi. is we're just kind of wrapping it up. There's Ellie. Say hi. Hi. Okay, there you go. Hi. There's Margie. Hey, Mike. Hey, Brielle. Hey, everybody. Hi. So here's this little pamphlet. So everything's been done. I've already documented everything. And so here, I'll sit a little further in. I've already documented everything. So Ellie mentioned to me today, she goes, oh, wow, you know those Bible tracks that were in your container? Well, my mom found one when they were out walking, and it was after the time that I had found the one that really saved me from going over the edge after doing the second container because I didn't know whether or not I'd gotten it all right. And the Lord proved I did by showing me one of these little Bible track books and then having the same exact one in my mailbox thus the following Monday. So anyway, the Bible track books that you've already seen in this video that say the tomb is empty and then the other one that says the tomb is empty, they're the identical same book. Well, they were in the container that represents the judgment seat of Christ. And so then Ellie mentioned today, was it to, yeah, today that her mom found one of these when they were out for a walk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were out for a walk. And so I said, hey, remind me after I get all the container totally packed up and everything, Remind me to see the little one your mom found. And so Ellie got this little book and she remembered, because I'm wrapping things up right now, and she remembered to bring this thing out. And here it is. And so I sat here and I read it. And uh, the very last thing it says, so the, the, the little book is The Word Made Flesh. And the whole thing's about Jesus coming into the world. And the very first page is, And you shall call his name Emmanuel. With us is El, the Almighty God. And the very last page, the very last page right here, I'll put it right there is, and this same Jesus you saw go up into heaven shall return in like manner. And it says, behold, I come quickly on the, and I will come on the clouds of heaven and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So I'm, I'm buzzing, but I just don't think, oh, by the way, you saw the fortune cookie thing already. Uh, don't worry about it being the end of the world. So, so I would suggest the same because I know it's burdensome in a way. I mean, it's the coolest thing in the world and I understand it's very burdensome too. But anyway, just pray for everybody. But when you know it's the end of the world and it's just like Noah and his family, um, Noah and his family started a whole new thing. And so for those of us that know and have been called, it's, it's no different. There's nothing to worry about. We'll all be taken out and it's a whole new thing. That's it. All right, guys. All right. See you soon. Bye, guys. So here we are. This is the day we move the two shipping containers that represent the bride and the judgment seat. And when they're getting moved from Casimir Casimir means covenant, proclamation of peace from the corner of Rainbow, which was a covenant the Lord made with Noah, that he would never destroy the earth with water again. And here is the Isaiah 54, covenant of peace. I'll make an everlasting covenant of peace with you, Casimir. All right, there it goes. There's the, the bride. Getting on the transport, leaving the corner of Casimir, which means covenant, proclamation of peace, and rainbow. This is at 154. There we go. All right.
there it is. That one's getting set down. Set down right there. Perfect. Exciting day. Kind of missed that one getting picked up. There goes the judgment seat. They're both officially getting on there. Everlasting covenant of peace. The two going back to be one. That is phenomenal. Absolutely staggering. Getting it on film. There it goes. Woohoo! So, one more time. The bride and the judgment seat are leaving their, their little spot here in Grand Junction, which was the great coming together. It's leaving the corner of Rainbow in Casimir. The address here is 154, 1, and then 54. Isaiah 54, mind boggling. Okay, there we go. There they are loaded up. Ready to roll. So I just want to take a moment and look up and say thank you for what you did for all of us. Thank you for what you did, Jesus, on that cross for us. And uh, here we go. Leaving Rainbow Avenue. Going to uh, the Ark. I wonder what the odds are on that. I have to document this. This is the road that I came off of onto the highway right when I saw the rainbow. Um, I just, and it says Delta Correctional Facility. Delta Correctional Facility. And that's where I came out of. I literally, this is the road to Delta Correctional Facility. This is the road I came out of when I turned on that, on the road where the rainbow was. And it was raining on me on this road. It was like just pounding on me, leaving this area where the Delta Correctional Facility is. And then I'm standing in the middle of a rainbow. That is literally insane. That is just completely bonkers. No, I mean, cause we were in a correctional facility called the Earth. Delta means change. We're changing from our flesh bodies to a light beings, a rainbow. And they caught the rainbow and they know it. The enemy knows it. We're the rainbow. We're light beings. That is absolutely insane. This is the road I was on right before the rainbow. The road to Delta Correctional Facility. That is absolutely mind boggling. I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> it's I'm stuck in this really long line. This is a pass that um, there's a boulder that fell on a guy, a giant rock fell down the cliff and killed somebody. So the whole highway is blocked. So we're gonna have to, I'm gonna take another route, but it's pretty fascinating that a rock fell and crushed a guy. So I need to document what happened. I'm on Highway 50, Highway 50, and I was waiting in a line they said the highway would be closed for a couple hours, but I was waiting in line, sitting on my tailgate. And there was a truck behind me and I heard the guy's radio and he, he told the driver, hey, yeah, you need to find another route. <clears throat> While they were working on a highway, the highway up ahead of us, a giant boulder broke loose and totally crushed a guy. So they're gonna have to keep the highway closed now for a lot longer so because they're bringing in an investigative team and all that stuff so imagine you're me i'm in a search and rescue vehicle and and i'm sitting there just going like this is so weird and this cop pulls up and and i and i and i look over at him he pulls over to talk to me to, about my vehicle my search and rescue vehicle and i tell him hey i heard that this guy got crushed by a big rock. He goes, you got pretty good intel. And I said, yep. And uh, 
And then he says, yeah, a big boulder fell off and completely crushed the guy and blocked the highway. So the highway's closed. So he told me you should find another alternative route. So I made a U-turn and I'm going back on Highway 50. Then in my spirit, I hear the Lord tell me to look up 50 in the concordance. It means to be ignorant is in one language and then the other one is uh, uh, my father is rescue so imagine I made a u-turn there's a guy up in front of me that got completely crushed by a boulder Daniel Dan, Daniel 12 says the last kingdom of the world the miry clay mixed with the iron which is what I showed everybody the stone that was hewn from the quarry without hands which is Jesus shall crush all these other kingdoms and I'm I'm just sitting here trying to process what's happening in my world it's so insane it's a manifestation of the Bible and the Lord showing I'm coming to crush them now I'm coming to crush the other kingdoms the roads closed I'm like those that got rescued made a u-turn think about it search and rescue I had to make a u-turn that's just crazy guys and I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard to explain how crazy what's been going on on this trip is. So I want to do one more quick documentation. So I just made a U-turn on Highway 50 and the, my reroute is over a highway called 550. It's Red Mountain Pass, Red Mountain Pass. And so it's just so crazy what just happened back there. I just, I must can't process it. A boulder fell and crushed a guy. And so the road's totally closed. I mean, anyway, you can't even think this stuff. And then the Lord tells me, look up 50, the highway they draw on. 50 means like willfully ignorant. Those that are willfully ignorant are crushed by what? The rock. Reminds me of Daniel 2.43. Reminds me of Daniel 2.43. The rock hewn from the quarry without hands shall crush all these other kingdoms. And now I'm going on 550 to one of the most scenic places I've ever been in my life. It's called Ure, Colorado. Uh, I think it's O-U-R-A-Y, Ure. Like, hooray! <laughs> anyway... It's just so fascinating. I just have to document this. So I can even look at it myself and just remember this was so impossible. So I'm not sure, but that sure looks like the thing from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Totally. It's really weird. I'm on my way to Four Corners. This is so weird. The Lord routed me, I mean, because of the situation with the rock that dropped and crushed the guy on highway 50 then he sends me to f highway 550 to get out of there and then um and now i've i've been rerouted it's just fascinating and um i'm gonna end up in four corners wait hey that's a video hey this is everybody Hi. this is brooke tammy and <laughs> cammy and i stopped here oddly enough again on the way back because i got rerouted mm. We're glad. Keep going. We had a pizza. Yeah, we, we had a pizza. Ourselves. It was fun. Yes, it was fun. And this is their super cool new house that was basically given, traded, super weird deal, yeah. but impossible. Anyway, we got to get some photos. So I'm just documenting right now. I'm I'm arriving right now on the road to the heart. Um, there's like one turn, but as I was coming in, I thought all I have to do is go straight and make a left turn. You know about I had a little ways to get to the ark and I, I was encouraging myself like all I got to do is on my maps just go straight and make a left you know by I'm probably 50 60 miles out somewhere around there maybe a little more and I said just to encourage myself I said I just got to go straight and make a left and I'll be there and I looked over to the left and there's a giant rainbow just hitting the ground. I got to, I'll show you the picture of it. So I get to where I'm talking about to make the left hand turn and I have to pull over and get gas. And so then I, 
I called Jim and I said, "Hey, I'll be there shortly." Where are you? He goes, "I'm I'm almost I'm I'm almost at the Ark." And then he said, "Did you see the rainbow?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, that's weird. I saw one, you know, 30 minutes ago on my way here. There was a big rainbow that was like landing right where the Ark would be." And he tells me, "Dude, there's a the most brilliant rainbow." I pulled over and videotaped it and it's landing right on the ark. I'm not joking. I'm on my way there right now just after my whatever 20 hours of driving. So to show up with two, two rainbows, like I saw a rainbow from where I was at way that direction and then Jim, you know, who's already here, right when I'm I mean, I'm just down the street, guys, and there's a giant rainbow. And he goes, I pulled over and videotaped it. And I was like, that's just insane. You guys already saw Grand Junction, right? I'm telling you guys, we're about to leave. The end is here. The end has come. And no one knows the hour of the day. And I don't purport to know the hour of the day, but I can tell you this. I'm an end of the world harbinger that announces the arrival of the King of Kings, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. So yeah, anyway, this is just my arrival right now into uh, Beat City where the Ark is. Here we go. It's just phenomenal. The whole trip's been phenomenal. Unbelievable stuff. Just stuff you couldn't even think of. But it all happened. All right. So, more to come. Okay. Okay, so here we are. We got the lights on. We're bringing the guy in. There's the truck behind me with the containers. So far, we made it. So far, so good. <laughs> Freak out. So much stuff. So much supernatural stuff. It's crazy. So here we are. I'm leading. The, I'm leading him in. We're on the way to the ark. We're going down the the road to the ark and we're going to get these containers set down all glory to god man jesus thank you so much i'm so grateful how cool so, we got the crane over there all set up and uh we got a the the boxes are the truck stuck in the mud so we're having a little bit of an issue the crane made some pretty deep trenches here so the trenches that the crane made kind of slowed things up so we're trying to get this truck unstuck okay. and then get it in here. Okay, as crazy as this sounds. So the crane, the truck is stuck. The truck is stuck over there. And I'm just hearing in my spirit, the Lord say, pay attention to the bill. So the crane operator is going to give us a bill and it's a flat rate for the first two hours. But it looks like we're gonna go over those first two hours just because we have a stuck vehicle and the containers are stuck. But I heard pay attention to the bill. So I'm just gonna log that right now. See what where that goes. Oh, here we back. Alex, Jim, and Tony the crane guy. We're a little bit stuck. Going up. <laughs> Hang on, let me do a moan. <laughs> okay, so the truck is unstuck. We got the containers off. What's really crazy is that one right there that represents the judgment seat. The doors were broken open, which is crazy. The, I mean, the doors in there were so anchored down, it's crazy. All the doors uh, anchors broke. And the, the big glass door that comes down came down it didn't break which is awesome because that would be a real bummer 
but the big glass door broke and it came down it's very prophetic it's just insane and here we go we're going for pickup number two here we go Okay, well, when we're done with this job. So now we're doing the leapfrog thing from over there to over there. Sorry about that rough video, guys. Had to get over there and move it. Here we go. My lord. <laughs> Alex and Jim. Now we're doing the leap. Well, I don't like that word. We're hopping one over the other and we're getting them all the way back to the pad that's been prepared for them. And with all these miracles and the rainbows and coming to the ark, here it is, the judgment seat showing up at the ark. I mean, and what's crazy is the orientation of these has changed as compared to what they were in Grand Junction. And that's just because the truck got stuck and because, you know, the crane had to pick them up and set them down one at a time. We had no choice. And so they have to be set down the, the order they're in now. So just unbelievable. So here we go. The bride. This represents the bride that was bought with the blood of Christ. We were bought with the blood of Christ. This is a representation of the bride coming together with the judgment seat at the ark. And it is almost done. This is, this is when the Lord told me this is the last thing I'll ask you to do. I don't have to go do any more wild uh, trips, which is kind of sad in a way, but I'm so ready to go home. I can't even express to people how badly I want to go home. Heaven is our home. So here it goes. Thank God for these guys right here. Okay, here we go. And we're gonna spin it around. Looking good. Looking super, 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 super good. There it goes. The bride going into her place next to the judgment seat. Praise God. And mosquitoes are everywhere. Wow. All right, so. Here we go. We're exhausted. There's Tony, the crane operator. Tony, Tony, save the day. All right, there the guys are. They're set down in their place. Superb job. Nice get. Jim got it ready. Zach, Alex got it ready. Woohoo! Awesome. So here I am with the boys. Zach, Alex, Jimbo. Woo! They got it ready. So, I already documented, and these guys have already seen the video. Out there, the Lord said, pay attention to the bill. Because the, the truck was stuck, and it looked like we were going to go into overtime. We actually did go into overtime, I think a little bit, maybe. But the guy wrote me this bill right here, and I'll show it. Let's see. Uh, 885 is the bill. 885. And the Lord said, pay attention to the bill. Um, well, 885 right there is an ancestor, an ancestor of Christ. Well, Jesus said, you know, unless a kernel of corn dieth and be planted into the ground, it abideth alone. But if it dieth and is planted, it brings forth much fruit. And his purpose was to bring forth many brothers and sisters. So this bill is 885. I just showed it to you. 885. Eight. 85 right there 885 so anyway so here's something really weird so i pay the bill and we're all changing our shirts because we're all soaking wet and yeah and so then uh jim says he gets a text yeah i got a text from the for the crane driver crane, crane operator <clears throat> and uh the crane operator's like hey i'm um, sorry i made a mistake on the bill <laughs> We already have this one that says 885 Ancestor of Christ. So, message received. I mean, how many times do they just mess up your bill on 
you know, a, a crane reel. I've never had one mess up a bill. Anyway, so now he says it's how much? 1055. 1055. That ought to be interesting. And I just already know, I already know what 10 is and 55, which is insane. But uh, I think it's kind of interesting that it's already an ancestor of Christ. And his purpose was to bring forth much fruit, many brothers and sisters. And isn't that what this is all about? The whole world is him bringing all these, you know, kindred out because he's our kindred, kindred redeemer, kinsman redeemer. There you go. <laughs> right. Okay, so anyway, narrating is kind of tricky like this. But so anyway, obviously, since the crane guy texted Jim and said 1055, correct? 1055. So obviously, the Lord said, pay attention to the bill. 885 was an ancestor of Christ. And 1055 is a calm. Let's see. I'll just go like this. So it'll give me. It says a calm a calm and there was a perfect calm that came over the sea it be the sea became perfectly calm um it also means a palace that's the other so greek is calm hebrew means a palace um and a house a house slash palace i have many mansions and if it were not so i would have told you but i've gone to prepare a place for you in my house, there are many mansions. So anyway, it is what it is. And these are just facts. So documenting the facts. Okay, so Alex, Zach, so they're gonna help me a lot. And so we're just documenting. Hey Zach, come here a sec. Stand right here. Okay, look, look at the, look at the tunnel and the, Oh, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's Look how far back there it goes. Look at that. See, right? That's crazy. Isn't that insane? Look. <laughs> See what that's I mean? Good, yeah, that's a good uh, Okay. So, yeah. So, coming into the system, there's a sperm from above and one from below. And so, that's why those lights, it looks like water and the sperm, you can tell that's liquid. And there's the other one, they come in. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Crazy. Okay. And you're going through the dimension, so you chose to come into this dimension. There you go. That's the way it's supposed to light up. Look at that. That's insane. So you go in there, and then you come out. You come out over here. And then you enter into the twin system, which is right side up, upside down, the devil. As you can see the horns, it's a twin. One's right side up, one's upside down. Absolutely, look at the depth of this tunnel. You guys are gonna see this in the video. Look at that dimension you're coming in. It's insane. Okay, then over here the tomb is empty. Let's see where, so there is the empty tomb. I need to change the lights on that a little bit. So you can see how far it recesses in, but I need to get the lighting right. The tomb is empty, and then the resolution of the resolution of the whole thing is the three crosses of Calvary. And so now the judgment seat uh, container has been set up. What's really crazy is the judgment seat container. Um, this one, the door during transport like came loose from the tie downs. I had this thing so tied down, it's insane. The other one came loose, but not all the way, but this one was down. So, I mean, prophetically speaking, I know the door's shutting, there's no doubt about it. But, so we come into the twin system, and then that's why Jesus was crucified between two different guys to represent the twin system, which is you, which is me, and then he took the cross for you so you could get out of your eternal punishment. And then, just in case anybody didn't believe it, there's the same two identical Bible tracts. One was in the middle of the road the day I asked the Lord to please, please tell me that I got all this artwork right. There's the empty tomb. This was in the middle of the street to confirm it. And this one was in my, my P.O. box to double confirm it. You got it all right. So, 
the judgment seat has been put in place and I can assure you it's going to happen and it's going to happen soon but no one knows the hour of the day so I'll never say I do but if you're not ready now uh, yikes and you're not ready so anyway I'll do a couple more vids but this is ready to go bye guys <laughs> I just thought I would record this because it's so interesting. I'm leaving the ark right now. I just got ex through explaining the whole system is right side up, upside down. And this truck is in front of me. It says Forza, which means force. And it shows the world right side up and upside down motion. But look at the back. It says there's two crosses and one's in Spanish, one's in English. It says, to you be all the honor and the glory. I mean, that's just so crazy weird the timing is impossible I mean because that is the force the right side up upside down force that he's in control of all of it he's in control of all of it he creates the darkness and forms the light that's why there's two crosses you know there's a light being in us there's a dark being in us and then he reconciles the two to himself anyway and yeah, so just, you know, to finish that off, there's the truck in front of me. I just thought it was really weird, just leaving the ark. And that is the exact system I just explained, that entire force. The Lord creates the darkness and he forms the light. Genesis 1 is, let us create man in our image, create, bara. And then, it's the same word in Isaiah, the Lord creates the darkness, bara. And then he forms the light. Uh, the word is yatsar, and so in Isaiah, it's... The Lord creates darkness, bara, creates bara, darkness, and then he forms, yatsar, forms, yatsar, the light. So anyway, Genesis 1 is, let us create bara, man in our image. So they created man in their own image, bara, male and female. And then, then, in Genesis 2, when the Lord God forms man, he forms him, um, yatsar, the Lord God forms Adam and breathes into him the breath of life and man becomes a living soul. And the system itself is designed to show the very existence of God. I mean, we are. That's what the Lord let me prove by using the right side up, upside down paradigm. He let me prove darkness and light together was all done by him. I create the darkness and I form the light. And the system is the proof of the existence of God, the very system itself proves it <laughs> so anyone that says not there's no god uh is a fool <laughs> it's so crazy it's just i don't know how to just even wrap my brain around all of it but it's so simple really he creates a darkness and then he forms light out of the darkness that's why genesis 1 let us create man in our image and then in genesis 2 he forms man like a potter out of clay isaiah 29 surely you're turning up things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay genesis 2 mystery solved. The mystery of all things has been solved. All glory to God.